Growth of its Bag. This is Mr. G here today, and welcome to your first lesson in a video series based upon the Physics 11 curriculum out here in uh, British Columbia. Uh, today, in lesson one, we're going to talk about this idea of measurement, more specifically uh, units and scientific notation. And these are ideas that we're going to have to use throughout the entire year. So it's super important that we get these figured out right away. Now, most of you who are listening have obviously heard of the metric system and probably use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, scientists back in the day, they needed to come up with some sort of language that we could use uh, no matter where we were in the world and people would understand without any sort of serious translation or conversions needing to be done. A uh, classic example is the idea that NASA actually lost the satellite uh, because they did a conversion from imperial to metric incorrectly and that cost them about a half billion dollars. So really important that we all speak the same language. It's not to say that in our physics class we're not going to use the imperial system, i.e. miles, uh, but at the same time the majority of our measurements are going to be done using uh, SI units or the metric system. Now, there are some basic uh, units involved when we talk about certain measurements. If we're measuring length, uh, our fundamental uh, unit that we use is called the meter, and you've probably all seen this symbol as a lowercase m. Uh, with mass, uh, when we're talking about the base units, there are seven base units and SI units. Uh, in this one, it's actually the kilogram. Now, interestingly enough, uh, mass is the only base unit in SI measurement that actually has a prefix, in this case, kilo. Uh, so don't be confused and think that gram is the, the unit you want to use. And again, most of you will know that this is the idea of a kilogram. Uh, time, our classic idea of seconds, and that's a lowercase s. And then we get into some uh, non-base unit uh, SI units, but at the same time, we're always going to deal with speeds and forces and energies in terms of these base 7 SI units. So when we're talking about speed then, uh, we know that speed in its most basic form is distance over time, and that means that if we have units, they're going to be in units of meters per second. And if we take a look at the unit, uh, units as a symbol, uh, that's a simple m divided by s. That's not to say that you're not going to see velocities in kilometers per hour or miles per hour or kilometers per second or some fraction of the speed of light. Uh, but at the same time, we always want to try and bring our velocities back to meters per second. It's just going to make it a lot easier to use all of these equations that we have uh, as we move into kinematics. Acceleration now, that's how we uh, increase our speed. That's going to be in terms of meters per second squared, or seconds times seconds. And again, that's going to look a little something like that. Please don't make that too uh, in line with the S, or else you're going to think it's 2S, and then you're going to multiply everything, and it's going to be hideous. Uh, some new terms that you may be using this year for the first time is this idea of force. Uh, we're going to use the Newton after Sir Isaac himself and that is going to be a capital N and something down the line we're going to use this idea of joules and that's a capital J. Now all of these are like speed and acceleration related to uh, our mass, time, and length base units uh, but we're not going to get into that until a later date. Here's our base units. These are things that are absolutely going to be necessary. Uh, you're going to see some prefixes. We talked about prefixes already with this idea of mass, the, the idea of kilo. Uh, and what does that exactly mean? Well, if our base unit here is a meter, a kilometer, of course, is meter times 10 to the 3, or 1,000 meters. Again, that should not shock anybody that there's 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Uh, these eight prefixes here are absolutely uh, a necessity to you when you're trying to figure out what a question is asking you for and how you have to convert units and all these ideas. Uh, so mega, kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, milli, micro. If you don't know these symbols and you don't know what their factors are, you don't know that uh, there is 1 times 10 to the 6 microns in a meter, or conversely, there is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters in a micron, uh, you are really going to run into some trouble because you're going to do all the calculations and you're not going to end up with the right solution. It's going to bug the heck out of you. So I implore you, learn these. There's a couple others that aren't written here that might be worthwhile. Uh, I'll just kind of write it above. This idea of giga with a capital G and that's a billion meters or a billion grams or a billion seconds. 
And if you go the other way, right underneath micro is this idea of nano. Uh, anybody who's watched sci-fi has heard of nanotechnology with a lowercase n. And again, that's a billionth of a meter. So I wouldn't say we need any more than these. There's femto and there's pico and there's all these other ideas. Uh, again, for those of you that know computers, tera, as in a terabyte, uh, would be the next one above giga. So plenty of prefixes to know. Uh, this is not the complete list, but it's certainly a good list to start with. So memorize, memorize, memorize. Now, let's say, for example, uh, we're going to start to do some unit conversions because this is super important. So let's say we have 165 millimeters to uh, units of meters. Well, this should be easy for anybody that grew up in Canada or any country that uses the metric system, and it should be easy for the Americans too, so don't think that I'm hating on you. But at the same time, uh, what do we do? Well, I'm going to teach you the absolute brute force way, and yes, there are shortcuts to these, and if you find these shortcuts, that's great. But I want to make sure that everybody has the same base knowledge before they start looking for uh, their shortcuts. So when we're dealing with this, we have 165 millimeters. I like to use this idea of proportion. So what I do is I multiply it by the fraction, and I know that in one meter, there is a thousand millimeters. Now, how did I know to set up the fraction like this? Well, it's simple. If you take a look, the units are now above and below each other, which means like any other number that's the same, they'll cancel out. And what are we going to be left with? We're going to be left with this idea of meters, which means that we end up with a value of 0 0.165 meters. So fractions, it's a slow thing. And again, I'm sure all of you were thinking, well, you know, we got the decimal. You can just move it three to the left and we'll be fine. Absolutely, you could. But I want to make sure everybody knows that when we get into the more difficult conversions, this is how we're going to be doing it. So let's say we have something like this. We have 380 centigrams and we're going to turn it into milligrams. Now, Again, there are people that are going to try and memorize how to get from centa to milla without having to do an intermediate step, which is just go to regular grams. And if you do that, that's great, but I'm not going to right here. So we're going to have 380 grams. Oh, pardon me, uh, 380 centigrams. And we're going to multiply that. Well, we know that in one gram, there are 100 centigrams. How did I know that? The same as anything else. And I always go back to the actual length uh, ideas that there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so there's going to be 100 centigrams in a gram. Well, what's that going to do? Well, that's going to cancel the units of centigrams, which is going to give us a number in grams. Well, that's cool, but we want it in milligrams. So what's the next thing we have to do? Well, now we have to say, well, we need to cancel out this one gram. And we need the top to be in milligrams. So how many milligrams are in a gram? Well, that's a thousand, which means those are going to cancel. Again, if you want, you notice that the hundred will take out that thousand by two zeros, and you're going to end up with the number of 3,800 milligrams. So again, as you do these more and more, uh, it will become easier and easier. Let's take a look at another one. 24 megaliters into milliliters. Again, numbers that we don't normally deal with. We're talking about, you know, swimming pools and stuff like that. Well, we have 24 megaliters. And what do we need to know? Well, in one megaliter, well, mega, if you remember back to our table, was 10 to the 6. So that means there are 10 to the 6 liters in one megaliter. What's going to happen? Units are going to cancel out. Fantastic, but we need it in milliliters. So, we need to divide by a liter, and how many milliliters in a, a liter? It had better be a thousand milliliters, just like millimeters in a meter. This is milliliters in a liter. And away we go. Well, this time, uh, we don't get to cancel out any zeros. In fact, we're adding three to it. And we're going to end up with this idea of 2.4 times 10 to the 10 milliliters. So there's one specific type of conversion that I want you to key in on, and this is the idea of meters per second into kilometers per hour, or vice versa. And this is a little trickier because now there's two units to convert, not just uh, one, so you got to be a little extra careful in how you deal with these. So I'm going to do it the exact same way that I did the other ones. So we start with 24, and I'm going to write it like this. And now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the unit of length. So I have meters, remember we want it on the opposite uh, end, so if, it's, if meters are in the numerator we want it in the denominator, vice versa. In this case we want meters 
on the bottom. Well, what do we want up top? Well, we end up wanting a kilometer. So how many meters are in a kilometer? Well, that's a thousand. And what's going to happen there is the meters are going to cancel, and we're going to be left with units of kilometers per second. Well, that's not cool, because we want it kilometers per hour, so what do we have to do now? Well, again, on the bottom, we want this idea of hours, which means on the top, we need to know how many seconds are in an hour. And I've done this a few times. Uh, there's 60 seconds in a minute, and there's 60 minutes in an hour, so 60 times 60 is 300 and, or it's 3,600 seconds in one hour. And what's that going to do? Well, seconds will cancel, and we're going to be left with units of kilometers per hour. And when you do the calculation, you end up with 86.4 kilometers per hour. Now, there's something I want to point out to you, is like we did in a previous example, uh, if we take 3600 and divide by 1000, we would end up with the number of 3.6. And this is a super important number, because if you want a shortcut, and I'll show you the shortcut now, because this one is going to help a lot, because you're going to use this again and again. If you're going from meters per second to kilometers per hour, notice that kilometers per hour is higher than meters per second. Please understand, physically speaking, uh, 86 meters per second is not 24 kilometers per hour. 86 meters per second is bloody fast. So know the difference between the two, okay? Uh, but if we have kilometers per hour and we're going to meters per second, we're going to divide by 3.6 as well. So a nice little shortcut if you use it, great. Uh, for those of you with different teachers, make sure they're okay with that. Otherwise, they're just going to dock you for it, okay? The next topic that we're going to talk about is this idea of scientific notation. Uh, we've dealt with this more times than I can count through high school, so this should not be new to you. Um, if we take a look at 32 million, uh, remember we start with the decimal wherever it is and we count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we end up with 3.2 times 10 to the 7. So remember, okay, with scientific notation, it's always single digit decimal and then whatever decimals behind it that's fine but you never have something like 24 times 10 to the 7 at least you don't leave it like that there's going to be an example I give you where you'll actually have that for a moment and then you're just going to move the decimal place over one more time if we take a look at the other one you'll notice the decimal is on the left here and we're going to move it to the right one two three four five six so we end up with 4.36 times 10 to the well we went to the right a total of six times. Now you'll notice that I just threw this negative in and left it positive because again a negative uh, exponent means that it is actually a decimal number whereas a positive exponent uh, means that we're in to the integer values. Something I want to remind you of please don't just type out 4.36 and then the multiply sign and then the 10 and then the power and then the 7 right please use either this e the double e or the exponent whichever button you have uh, that is the equivalent of times 10 to the power of whatever number you put in um, if people type it out uh, just one line after another I know there's some calculators that actually let you get away with that at the same time this is easier and you will make less errors so just do it this way okay so if you take a look at these questions here, you should be able to roll through these questions, I implore you. Now would be a good time to press pause and just bomb through these as quick as you can. Uh, but it shouldn't take you any time at all. If we look at 5.5 .5 billion, uh, well, decimals here. To get over here, you'd have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you'd end up with 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 9. 780, decimals there, 1, 2. So 7.8 times 10 to the 2. 0.91, oh, we're going the other way now, 1, 2, so it's 9.1 times 10 to the minus 2, and finally 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Notice how I'm not going any further than that, and there is that 4 all the way over there, we've got to write it all, 0, 0, 4 uh, times 10 to the minus 6. See, once you got it, you got it, and you'll just roll through it. Okay, what if we want to go the other way? Well, again, it's simple. We start with this, we add the decimal here, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, there's this one there, 1, 2, 3, 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.00055, so just go backwards. We start at this, the decimal's here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, decimal's there, put the zeros there, and we end up with <clears throat> uh, 7.1 million, or 7,100,000. 
And finally, 1 times 10 to the 3. Start with the 1. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And we end up with the number of 1,000. So should be easy. should be able to do it both ways. Don't just rely on your calculator. You guys know what you're doing. Last thing we're going to talk about is something that I brought up a little earlier. Uh, this idea of using exponents to your advantage. You have learned in your math careers this idea of exponent rules and how to deal with them. For example, if we have two numbers with the same base and we multiply them together, what do we do? We add up the exponent. So this ends up being 10 to the 8. If we look at B, uh-oh, we have different numbers in front, but the base where the exponent is is the same. So what do we do? We multiply the front numbers. 4 times 5 is 20, and that's going to be times 10 to the, well, minus 3 plus minus 5, which is going to equal 20 times 10 to the minus 8. I already said bad form to leave it like that. You can't leave scientific notation with a double-digit number in the front. So what do we do? We move the decimal place over one more, and you end up with 2 times 10 to the minus 7. Well, hold on now. Why did I end up with minus 7? Remember, we're dealing with this in terms of negative exponents. We moved it 1 to the left, which means we have to add one number to it. If you take a look at C, 10 to the minus 3 times 10 to the 5, I think you're all picking up. Add the exponents together, and you should get 10 squared. Look at D. We have 8 times 10 to the 5 times 1.2 times 10 to the 8. Uh, again, multiply the front numbers. 8 times 1.2 is 9.6 times. We have 10 to the 5 times 10 to the 8. That's 5 plus 8, so 13. Those are all the multiplication rules. What about division? Uh, instead of add, you subtract. You have 10 to the 3 divided by 10 to the 5. It's going to be 10 to the 3 minus 5, which is equal to 10 to the minus 2. Uh, looking at F, same idea. You have to divide the numbers in front first, then you divide the exponents next. Uh, 2.3 divided by 1 is just 2.3. Uh, times 10 to the, well, you have minus 3, subtract minus 5, which is going to be actually a positive 2. Uh, looking at G, we have 10 to the minus 3 divided by 10 to the 5. We have minus 3, subtract minus 5. You're going to end up with 10 to the minus 8, or negative 8. Uh, the last exponent rule, which hopefully you all remember, is this idea if you have an exponent outside of brackets, what you do instead is you multiply. So this base number here has to have the same power, so 3 squared times 10 to the 8 times 2. So when the number is outside of brackets, now you're multiplying the exponents, you're not adding them. So 3 squared is 9 times 10 to the 8 times 2, which is 16, and you're done. So again, when you're in doubt, obviously go to your calculator, but at the same time, you should be able to rattle these off without any problem at all. Okay, so I'm sure you have some questions to do. Uh, good luck with those, and we will see you again. Bye-bye.